Hello, Momo Grace family. What a joy and a blessing to come our homes. Um, as we have all heard, um, church will be reopening and will be regathering from 28th of June. So we want to encourage you and those of us who have not heard about it to, for us to prepare for this time. We know that it has been a very challenging time for us to be in isolation and we pray that this time that we are coming together as we observe all the protocols that are there we can be able to to gather as a church as a community and worship together so we will be expecting you on 28th of june today our scripture is taken from matthew 28 verse 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of age. You know, at this time, the disciples were expectant. They had missed their Messiah. Jesus has risen from the dead and Jesus is ascending into heaven. And Matthew records that Jesus goes up to the, the, the mountain. You know, Matthew is one that really sees Jesus as somebody who, who pictures Jesus like Moses. Anytime when we see the story of Israel, when we talk about mountains, it's actually a place where God meets his people. The mountain is the place where there is transformation. The mountain is the place where there is change. As Jesus spoke on the mountains to the disciples, he gave them authority. He said, all authority has been given to me. And this authority is both in heaven and on earth, and that authority has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus is talking to us today as much as he was even talking to them then. When Jesus says all authority, he's saying that you have the legal backing. I am with you. You know, this, is, this we all know, this is called a great commission. It's not a great commandment. It's a great commission that has been given to all people. So all authority, it is all authority to make disciples for all nations. Every nation under heaven is equally regarded by God. Human dignity, God respects each and every one, each and every soul is so meaningful to God. You know, when we see the commission that Jesus gave the disciples, this is a commission of change. It's a commission that guarantees them to change their mind, to change their outlook, to change their, who they are, to change their identity. And I believe strongly that the season that we have been in, that we have been through, it's cause for us to think about what it means 
to be a changed people or a changed person or a changed community. You know, um, Sona Rainin Taylor is uh, an, an author, he's a poet, a spoken word artist. And she's also a humanitarian and she writes about the changes that we see in our world today. And Sona reads, writes and reads like this. We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal other than we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return. My friends, we are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. You know, this writer calls us to the new normal, that we are not going back to what was normal. What was normal was rage. What was normal was discrimination. What was normal was isolation in disguise. What was normal was that we were not there for each other. But these, these times, these challenging times is calling us to rethink and I believe strongly is calling us for a change. And therefore, whether we like or not, change is coming. And we need to be ready, we need to be ready for what it means to be a changed person. It was never a normal place we were. The world had so many problems, problems of, of, of discrimination, problems of racism, problems of poverty, problems of all kinds of human problems was, was all over us. And therefore, as we prepare to regather, as we prepare to go back, we are challenged not to go back to our old ways. We are challenged to speak truth to power. You know, there's a scripture coupled for today's text that I'm using that is in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. That says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what is God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, from these two texts that we have seen, Jesus giving the great, the great commission, and at the same time, Paul commissioning the, the, the Romans, giving them what it means to be true disciples. I want to share with us three things. First of all, present your bodies. Present your bodies means that we offer ourselves. Paul speaks to the Romans. He said, I urge you, I beseech you, I appeal to you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Because God's mercy has been available. God has kept us through this pandemic. And what God demands from us now is for us to present our bodies. Present your body. When Jesus calls them, the disciples, and commissions them to go, it's asking them to be present. It's asking them to be available. It's asking them to present their bodies. You know, present your bodies, in other words, means that show up. 
Show up in the new ways. Show up in the new ways that are coming. Show up with the new challenges that are coming. You know, some of us and, and many of us and almost and all of us, we have been, we have shown up as a community in so many ways. We've shown up in church gatherings. We've shown up in our offerings. We've shown up in so many ways that we, we love by loving each other. But in this day and time, in this new season, we are in the season of change and we need to ask ourselves, what ways am I called to show up now? Maybe the way we were called to show up was was then was di is different from how we are called to show up now. You know, it could be very uncomfortable. The way we are called to present our bodies now will be uncomfortable because, in fact, we do not go to church. We are the church. And the church, the, 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 the strength of the church is our small communities, is our so, uh, communities, is our cell groups. Your cell groups is actually the strength of the church. So maybe your cell groups may be meeting in different ways now, but these are ways that we need to adapt. I know some of us are meeting on Zoom. Some of us are meeting, you know, in different kinds of ways. Some of us are making phone calls and stuff like that. But these are the ways. Anyhow it happens and anyhow your community or your cell group needs you, please show up. Show up. Showing up is a sign of readiness. It's a sign that you are ready to be a disciple. You are ready to take forth the word of God. You are ready to, to share the gospel. It's a sign that you are ready for change. You know, when God commissions us and gives us all authority for all nations, it's a commandment to show up. Because showing up is a way that we are able to connect. Present your bodies. Present your physical bodies. Present your spiritual bodies. Showing up signifies faithful presence. Let us see you. It may be uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. Change is painful. But in these new seasons, we want to see new ways that we are connecting with each other. So number one, show up. I'm grateful to our young people, our youth and our children ministry and, and kids and in many ways that they've, they've showed up in very significant ways. And some of them have to come and, and be in the Zoom and, and, and worship in Zoom and stuff like that. It's really uncomfortable. But this is a time for us to adapt. And I know some of us have taken care of each other. This is the way of being faithfully present. So number one, show up. Number one, present your bodies. The second thing I draw from these two scriptures is that be transformed. You know, Paul speaks to the Romans and said, do not conform to this world. There's so much going on around us, so much rage and confusion going on around us that we are, if we are not careful, we will be conforming. The caveat is this. Paul says, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's only through transformation that we will see that what is good and pleasant will of God. You know, transformation 
is the life of faith of going forward. It's a radical transformation. It's a radical change. It's a movement forward. It's a, it's a place that we are being formed and we are being shaped. And when you see the tense that Paul uses, transformation here is a process. Change is transformation, but this change is a process. You know, when we see the scripture very well, we can see that this change can be hard. Transformation is hard, but in this time, the only way we can see change in our community, change as a body, change as a community and a church, is when we are ready to continue this process of transformation. Transformation, in fact, is a process of changing your mind. You know, Paul said that be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to renew our mind. Yes, thank God for the old revelations. Yes, thank God for the old traditions. Yes, thank God for the old ways we have been doing things. They are good. Some are good. But in this new season, we need to look forward to God to direct us for new changes and new revelations and new directions. Transformation is a change of the mind that leads to a change of the heart, that leads to a change of action. It's a process. When our minds are renewed, we receive, that's where when we receive direction, divine revelation, it comes to our mind. But it doesn't end there. It's a change of mind, change of heart, change of action. Mind, heart, action. Mind, heart, action. This is the process of transformation. And this time when God is calling us as the world, not only are we transformed, when we are transformed, our world is transformed. In this time of great confusion and, and this time that people, uh, everybody is, is under frustration, transformation needs to begin from the church. And when transformation begins to the church, it radiates to the world and makes our world a better place. The third thing we see from the two texts we have today is that we are called to make disciples. Jesus tells them, all authority has been given to me on earth and on heaven, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. When we go, when we are present, and when we are transformed, we begin to make disciples. You know, in the recent routes and, and, and things that have gone on, when, when Judge Floyd was murdered, you know, what happened was that so many people were bringing up a lot of statements. So many people wrote a lot of things. And one of the writings that really struck me was from the, the president of Union Theological Seminary. He's, he's, this president is Brian Blount and his writing was very instructive. I'm afraid because I fear bringing trouble on myself when my people are raving in the perpetual abyss of systemic injustice. I'm afraid because I fear that one day, long after I have died, my son and my daughter will still weep at the news about a black individual murdered while sitting in a home running in his community, walking home from his corner store, driving in a car, standing in his front yard, exploring his path, worshiping in the church, lying helpless on an American street. The full weight of a cavalier, almost casual, curiously disinterested. 
white anger crashing his truth beneath. I'm afraid because I fear a reckoning on the street. If we cannot find justice in the courts, I am afraid because I know I'm not witnessing not enough. This, this statement really strikes me. That the fear of injustice in our world, the fear of compromise in our world, the fear of racism in our world, the fear of all kinds of oppression in our world, stems from the fact that we may not be witnessing enough. Think about it if the gospel has saturated the whole world, if the good news of the shed blood of the Lamb has saturated every corner and every nation of the world. We are agents of change. And the only way we can make the world a better place is to make disciples. Make disciples in every sphere of our life, in every place of influence. Everywhere you find yourself, whether you are in education, whether you are in politics, whether you are in the social world, whichever place you find yourself, we are called to make disciples. And the way that we can make disciples is to be true witnesses. It's to be witnesses with our behavior and witnesses with our conviction. It's to be witnesses of God. Witnesses of the finished work of Christ. Blount says, I'm afraid because I feel I'm not witnessing enough. When the light of God enters the hearts of people, when there is transformation in from the mind that shows from the heart and radiates into action, life of our world will become a better place. You know, change comes through discipleship. And our Sunday services are not enough. We have the mandate to make disciples. Disciples of all people, all nations. And this real change comes by teaching ourselves, teaching others to observe the things that we have been taught. You know, justice is a symbol of change. Where there is change, there is justice, there is peace, there is joy. When we see peace, joy, and justice in a place, we, we witness the fruits of change. Are you ready for a change? You know, I want to read a, a text from Amos 5, verse 21 to, 21 to 24 from the message. Bible. It says, I can't stand your religious meetings. I am fed up with your conferences and conventions. I want nothing to do with your re religion projects, your pretentious slogans and goals. I am sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations, your make, image making. I have had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? I want justice, oceans of it. I want fairness. Reverse of it. And that's what I want. That's all I want. You know, when God's space of change in our world and in our day, 
is a call of justice, it's a call of fairness, it's a call of peace in our world. It's a call for us to be able to decipher and differentiate when we are being very traditional. That we are being committed to our ways of doing things than being committed to God's path for us. God said, it's not about the religious things that we do. It is about love, compassion, fairness for all people in our world and in our days. It's about loving each other. It's about praying justice for all. You know, change is difficult, but change is possible. We all yearn for change. You know, I want to end by talking about John Newton, who wrote the, the very famous hymn, Amazing Grace. He had a very rough life. In fact, he was a slave trader. And as he led his life, and he did so many kinds of things, But what happened was that there was a time he had a shipwreck and God saved his life. That was the process he started his conversion. His conversion did not, was not instant. His transformation was not instant. It was a process. And after some time, it took a long time, but after some time, he was the one that fought for the abolition of slavery. And nine months to his death, he witnessed it. Nine months to his death that it was abolished, slave trade was abolished in England. And here in one of his journals, he wrote this. He said, I'm not what I ought to be. I am not what I want to be. I'm not what I hope to be in another world, but still I am not what I once used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. I'm not what I used to be and what I want to be, but there is a change. It's my prayer and hope that we will walk and experience transformation and change in our community and in our world. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord, so much. Thank you, Lord, for the times that we are in and for the days that we are in. We pray that God you will continue to shower your mercy upon us. Help us to walk the path of change. Help us to walk the path of transformation. Help us, Lord, to be present. Help us, Lord, to make disciples of all nations. Help us, Lord, to be your agents of change in our schools, in the hospitals, in the boardrooms, in everywhere we find ourselves. Make us instruments of change. We pray and we ask all this to God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please stay safe. Amen.